Hey fuckos, what's happening? Uh, listen, I'm gonna drop this video about Steven Crowder. And I probably shouldn't be making a video because I'm on some pain medication. So I'm feeling a little bit goofy. And, uh, you know, you'd think... Actually, Steven Crowder and I, we, we would get along well. I think we have a lot in common. Uh, for example, Steven Crowder was born, uh, raised in Canada and half of his family is American. And that's the same with me. And uh, he might speak a little French if he can remember it. And maybe I would too. And We'd probably both recognize those mugs. Uh, the, I, those were really... Um, that's like an old retro thing from a lot of places in Canada, but I think also in northern USA. You'd find those maybe if you went to... Uh, summer camp in Canada. Um, what else? Uh, Steven Crowder, well, I think that I might be a little bit older than him, but Steven Crowder and I also share this uh, quite a lot in common with uh, certain uh, torso surgeries and problems. And uh, probably neither of us could get through a metal detector. Actually, actually you can because titanium. Well, anyway, never mind. Okay, complaint number one. Uh, uh, I know, I did this in another video. Steven Crowder, and people say, yes, he was a stand-up comedian. Uh, but let me tell you, there's a reason he didn't continue being one. And there's a video on there. I'm not putting it on here because I'm getting really tired of getting, like, everything copyrighted. But, uh, you know, Crowder owns, he fucking owns some libs in the audience. And it's just terrible. It's It reminds me of Bill Hicks getting heckled by a woman who goes, you are. And then he just fucking loses it in a tirade. Well, anyway, no wonder the show is louder with Crowder. Because all he does is just get just yell loudly at the people. And that's not owning people. Just You're just stomping around yelling at people really loud in a loud voice. Anyway, listen, good for him. He realizes this and he starts um, kind of like a, I think back then, you know, they were still saying alt-right, like, which doesn't really alternative right. I don't know what, but anyway, um, you know, he's kind of showing up in these Glenn Beck or pajama media or whatever it is. And I kind of liked that what they were doing though, because they were thinking, can't we do sort of a comedy, comedy shows that are for kind of not politically correct, not lefty stuff. We'll have our own version, kind of libertarian, right-wingy. Okay, I get that his mom is the one that does all those uh, Just for Laughs festival, like does the artwork, and it's very obvious. Uh, I don't know what is their fucking obsession though with this. I feel like this is very boomer. They just. They can't get enough that it's a brick wall with a neon sign, and it's dark. It's a dark corner with a brick. <sighs> anyway, you know, I it looks like Montreal from the 60s. I don't know what's going on. We, we have to start saying this. He's not that funny. He's, you know, this reminds me of someone who's like a 20th ranked middleweight, and then they... You get kind of impressed because they make a lot out of their career, um, you know, beyond what their real talents are. So, you know, credit due for that. Like, he stretched this out. But uh, people got to say it, he's not funny. He's not that good. And it's a lot of this, I'm talking like this, and then I'm talking like this. And what's this? Another thing I don't like with his show is he does a lot of bullshit about this um, fucking worthless uh, right wing thing they've been doing for years. Just imagine now. Okay, take what the take what just happened to us, and then imagine a, we said that, but replace the word and w with gay. Or oh, j just imagine the outrage if we said if somebody said, and then somebody said that it was a woman. Replace the word woman with it. Yeah, that's fucking great hypocrite hunter. That's done fucking nothing. All they've done is gotten stronger. So you're, um, just imagine that it was Muslims instead of Christians. Think of the outrage that would be. 
Oh, and another thing that pisses me off with it. Actually, I had used to tune in once in a while. I find actually the guys around him are pretty good. Um, they're funnier than he is. Okay, so this is a problem too. Because he's doing his Jay Leno and his hacky stuff. And they have to keep supporting it. And, and so you're getting a lot of fake laughter where he's going, yeah, wouldn't that be something? And then I was going, ha, 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 But actually, it makes me sad because a lot of the dudes around him are funnier and would do better on that desk. He also does this thing where he's always about to get banned. And Big Tech is about to ban them, and I think he's got addicted to that. So every fucking week there's a big thing where YouTube censors are gonna ban me and then I started thinking I don't even think a lot of this is really happening and I or I don't I'm starting to think he's just happily trying to get that and run the line because every time he's about to get banned there's a big campaign and fucking telethon Um, what else was pisses me off with this guy yeah oh no so then I think okay let's give credit where it's due <clears throat> Excuse me, these pills are really kicking in. Uh, credit where it's due. Actually, I don't mind that viral thing he had. For, it was a, I think he had a viral video, and it's like um, he puts out a desk outside of college and says, uh, you know, men aren't privileged. Uh, change my mind. Yeah, okay, the change my mind segments. Um, about one out of ten of those is pretty good. Like, I'll be like, you know what? I don't mind this. I could, you know, I can watch 30 minutes of this. I also want to give credit where it's due. Um, he's got the Just for Laughs costume designers. They put him in a, you know, like a, a woman's dress. You know, like he's dressed like a woman. And of course, it's ridiculous. You know, and he's got big muscles and he's tromping into a feminist bookstore to, you know, just be, just be ridiculous and get all the feminists all you know, upset, and they're pretty good, that's good, you know, actually, that's his thing, I think he's good for that, he's a good remote guy, this show shouldn't be called Louder with Crowder, you shouldn't have, you have to have your name on it, and, uh, but that's what's happened, is he's become the brand, and he's not good enough, and he's last decade as well, gotta bring this up, uh, Stephen Crowder, you're, you're the 2010s, this has to change in the 2020s. And I kind of saw this glimmer of hope when they hired Dave Landau. And I thought, oh, good, 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 good stuff. So he's now he was filling in, uh, you know, guest. I guess you could say I didn't think it was guest hosting. I thought he was the new host. And I thought right on and Crowder, you do your surgery thing or whatever. And you just do remotes once in a while. You do a prank on, you know, prank on lesbian bookstores or or you do a, a change my mind thing outside the college. Dave Lando runs the show. The other guys also get to do more stuff. They're funnier. I see this thing now today where he gets into it with the Daily Wire. And so that's it now, Crowder. You're, you're on the fuck you list because, and I think, by the way, this is a Canadian thing. Because uh, Canadians are fucking bad for violating people's privacy. Um, this might surprise listeners, but I think Canadian people will know this. I think that he, this is a very Canadian thing. Like you, when you phone and have a man-to-man -man business conversation with someone, uh, and it might even be one thing that you're recording it. I mean, I know phones now, to just some of them, they just auto record all calls anyway. But fuck you for using that and putting that on the show with your stupid ass little fuck face. Like you're like you're a little devilish. Like you're gonna he he like fuck off. You little creep. And uh, incidentally, by the way, I think that's very anti Christian. You know, seriously. I think that's sinful. And I think it's a really dirty sin. Is expo you know, just like one of the original ones in the New World was you know, Ham exposed his father's nakedness. And, you know, I think this is a very similar spirit. Um, he's he's having a sneaky little devilish laugh because he's going to expose the other man, which th the other man thought he was having a private 
man-to-man conversation with Crowder in a negotiation, and then he plays this on a show. So now he's a little fuck weasel, this Crowder. So in addition to, dude, you're not that funny. And I, I don't know if that's why you had to make sure it's got Crowder behind you all the time. Um, you know, and you have to imagine if they turned it around instead of saying Black Lives Matter, they said White Lives Matter. You know, this thing is done. It's done. And you should go away now and let somebody else uh, sort of fill this space right now. It looks like you're trying to look like you have uh, crazy bl- dyed black hair. Anyway, this is kind of the pills talking. But anyway, um, so that's my thing. I just wanted to say, hey, uh, Stephen Crowder, why don't you just fuck off for a while? Okay, that's enough of you. So beat it. And I don't know, Dave Landau or somebody else. Or else the rest of the show, possibly they should sign with the Daily Wire. And then you don't. And then then they can see how that goes. Because <laughs> it would be more successful, I have to tell you. <laughs> anyway... All right, anyway, good luck, my friend. I'm sure that um, you're going to have another campaign that you, YouTube is about to censor you again. So um, you get back to work on that. And uh, anyway, best of luck to everybody. Uh, happy happy Lunar New Year. Xin Yan Kuai Le. Goodbye, everybody.